Good morning, everyone. My name is Carla Salp. I am the Public Engagement Specialist with the Washington State Department of Agriculture, and I am the agency spokesperson for the PEST program. This morning, we will be sharing information about a new Asian giant hornet detection in Snohomish County. Speaking today will be Sven Spieschiger with the Washington State Department of Agriculture and Justin Bush with the Washington Invasive, excuse me, the Washington State Invasive Species Council. We will be taking questions after the speakers have made their statements. In addition, Paul Van Westendorp with the British Columbia Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Fisheries is going to try to be on to be available for questions. Like this new detection, last year half of Washington's confirmed detections and all of British Columbia's confirmed detections came from alert community members, so the importance of participation from our local residents cannot be overstated. The individual who made this report wishes to remain anonymous. However, they will consider requests from interview with interviews from the media, uh, provided they're able to speak anonymously. If you would like to request an interview with this person, you can send me an email and I will forward it to them and they will respond if they are so inclined. One last request before we get started. Please keep your line muted and your video off to ensure the best sound and image quality for everyone. Sven, please go ahead. All right, can you hear me, Carla? I hear you loud and clear and we see you as well. Great, thank you. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for taking some time out of your schedule to join us again for uh, an update on our Asian Giant Hornet uh, programs. Uh, I'll start off by uh, giving just a few other updates as well. Uh, for about a year, we have been doing a rule change to our, um, basically our pest, agricultural pest quarantine language, and that is chapter 16-470 of the Washington Administrative Code. And this rule change basically adds Asian giant hornet and all species of non-native hornets. So that's anything in the genus Vespa. Uh, to the existing quarantine. And basically this prohibits uh, uh, the live life stages uh, of Vespa from being sold, offered for sale, uh, distributed or knowingly moved throughout or received within Washington state. And this is a, a pretty important thing because we are expending uh, a lot of resources to uh, attempt to eradicate the ones that we, we had uh, detected in Whatcom County uh, in 2019 and 2020. And uh, this just gives us uh, a, a little more authority to do so. The second part of that language uh, puts a, a 20 meter buffer uh, around a known nest uh, because a nest would constitute live life stages until such time as the nest can be dealt with. And if you want to read more on that, please visit the website. Uh, but uh, we were very happy that the rulemaking for that completed uh, about the 2nd of June and will become effective on July 3rd. Um, the second update I'd like to give you is what a little bit about what our plans are for 2021. And uh, as a matter of fact, today we have four uh, pest trappers uh, starting and they will be running uh, Asian giant hornet traps uh, throughout the Whatcom County area here in 2021. And they will be joined by two ag techs and we have an on-site supervisor this year. And uh, our plan is to have approximately 1,200 traps established in a wider array than last year. And um, just to uh, answer the question before it comes up, we did do a little bit of spring trapping, especially around the area of the nest uh, that was eradicated in 2020 as a precaution and uh, happy to report that there are all negative results from uh, our spring trapping efforts that have gone on there. Uh, we're gearing up to start our trapping July 1st, and we are absolutely thrilled and uh, humbled to be able to invite the public to join us again for citizen scientist trapping, uh, which can uh, obviously take place between July and November. And uh, if you want to know more information about that, of course, uh, visit the trapping page at our website at agr.wa.gov slash hornets. And uh, now for the, um, the new news for the year, um, our first detection for 2021, as Carla mentioned, was uh, turned in by a, a private citizen in uh, the Marysville area in Snohomish County. Uh, a lot of unusual circumstances uh, surround this, so I'll do my very best to explain uh, some of the details. Uh, first and foremost, it was detected uh, laying in a lawn on um, 
June 4th, and uh, that was a late Friday afternoon detection. And uh, we received that report Monday morning, and uh, Dr. Chris Looney was able to go out and investigate on the 8th and uh, was able to um, obtain the specimen. The specimen appeared to be a male, and it did appear to be Vespa mandarinia, but it was a little unusual. It is a different color form. And uh, by that, uh, what I mean is it still has the large orange yellow head and the last segment of the abdomen or the, uh, the back half of the insect is of course still yellow, but all the rest of the segments do not contain the orange yellow stripes that we're accustomed to seeing on the ones we found previously. Uh, for that reason, and because this would be a new county detection, uh, this specimen uh, went through our, our full verification process, which is a three-step process where we send the specimen to a regional laboratory uh, with the USDA and then off to the national laboratory uh, for that final confirmation. And the final confirmation was received on uh, Friday the 11th. Uh, at that time, um, it was determined to be Vespa mandarinia, which of course is Asian giant hornet. Um, some of the unusual things. So just to explain them a little bit, uh, we do not believe that any males uh, should be alive this time of year yet. And so uh, based on the condition of the specimen, which was slightly degraded and a little bit dry, um, it is our belief that uh, this specimen is from 2020 or earlier. Uh, my honest opinion is, is in fact uh, that it it seemed to have died in a protected place and maybe fallen out and landed on the lawn there. Uh, but uh, that aside, basically the only information we have is that a slightly dried out dead specimen was collected off of a lawn in uh, Marysville. And uh, there really isn't enough information to even speculate on how it got there or how long it had been there. Uh, just to say that it's it appears that it had not um, been from this season. Uh, so moving on from that, uh, we did go ahead and do a genetic analysis of this uh, before turning it in. And uh, to our surprise, of course, uh, uh, the uh, results from the genetic analysis indicate that it does not appear to be related at all uh, to the detections in 2019 in Nanaimo, British Columbia, nor is it related to the detections um, in 2019 and 2020 in Whatcom County. So it, uh, basically it seems to be a separate event. And I want to very much uh, clarify that a single dead specimen does not indicate a population. And for that reason, we will be taking uh, some extra precautions and getting traps up in the area. But at this time, there is not enough evidence to support that a population exists in Snohomish County, and uh, we will be, uh, you know, partnering up with the USDA, who has uh, been generously um, supporting us to get uh, trappers into the field uh, to investigate this detection and make sure that it's just a, hopefully just a one and done. And uh, what can we say? We, we can't thank enough uh, the, the folks who take the time to snap a picture and turn these reports in because that's how we become aware of these things and, uh, and are able to deal with them. Uh, Carla, was there anything else I needed to cover? No, I think that covers it. Great. I guess on to Justin then. Yeah, we will have Justin uh, up next, and then we'll take questions from the media. So, Justin, if you want to go ahead and turn on your video and uh, go ahead. Great. Well, Hello everyone, my name is Justin Bush and I coordinate the Washington Invasive Species Council. The council was created by the legislature in 2006 and it is tasked with providing policy level direction, planning and coordination for combating harmful invasive species. Every organization has a slightly different mission. The council bridges silos and provides a forum to collaboratively set policy and share successful approaches. The council unites all looks at the big picture, and then fills gaps that individual organizations cannot fill. The, this response to Asian giant hornet in the United States is a great example of this work. It's uniting federal agencies, state agencies, researchers, and the public in one effort to detect and respond to the Asian giant hornet. The Snohomish County resident that found the Asian giant hornet recognized a potential problem and alerted the authorities. 
And this is our message to everyone. If you see something, say something. If you suspect that you found an invasive species, whether it's a plant, an insect, or any other type of animal, you can report it to the Washington Invasive Species Council through our reporting app called Washington Invasives. Your report might be key in helping us respond quickly and prevent the problem from spreading, saving hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in economic loss and immeasurable environmental damages. We know how to prevent and stop invasive species, but we can't do this alone. We need everyone's help to be successful and protect what we know and love about Washington. Visit invasivespecies.wa.gov to learn more and get involved. We have fact sheets, events, on-demand trainings, in addition to reporting tools such as the Washington Invasives app. I thank you. Thanks so much, Justin. Okay, we will now take questions from the press. I just want to check. I don't think that Paul has got, oh, there he is on here. Great. So Paul is available, excuse me, Paul Van Westendorp from the British Columbia Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Fisheries is also on and available to take questions in addition to Justin and Sven. So at, the, at this point, we will begin taking questions. A couple of reminders. If you'd like to ask a question, use the raise your hand function and I will call on you and unmute your line so that you can ask your question at that time. You can also ask questions using the chat function. And when you do ask your question, please identify your news agency. Thanks so much. Okay, we have Joe Tien here. I'm going to unmute your line and looks okay. like you're good to go, Joe. All right, thanks, Carla, and thanks uh, all. Um, with the different colorings of this particular specimen found in Marysville, would that be possibly a different genetic uh, line of these types of hornets, or you don't at this th time think that it's connected to those that have already been found here in Whatcom or in BC? Okay, so... Um I, as I mentioned, we did run some uh, genetic analysis on it, and it is uh, definitely not the same genetic line as the ones that we have found in uh, BC or the ones, uh, or we actually tested numerous specimens from uh, Whatcom County, and it just is not a match for those at all. So, um, and the different color form kind of gives that away too. Thanks, Sven. Uh, we actually don't have anyone else with their hand up, and I don't see any questions in the chat box. So, oh, this is can you hear me? This is Don Jenkins with the Capital Press. Okay, go ahead, Don. And I did put in a question with the, I have a couple of questions. First of all, through the DNA testing, can the uh, the hornet be traced to its country of origin? Um, not at this time. the The data set that we have globally is uh, way too small uh, to figure out. Uh, that at this time. But what we can say with uh, quite a bit of confidence is that it really just does not match um, that that we've already found in Whatcom County or up in Nanaimo. And it, it does appear to be a, a different event uh, than uh, those others uh, that we have dealt with in years previous. Okay, thank you. And can you tell me more about this, this lawn, such as has it been being mowed this spring or anything that would suggest that um, I'm, I'm uh, intrigued about how it would turn up on a lawn here in, in early June. Sure. This is uh, one of the things that's most uh, perplexing to us. Um, anything we would do would be speculation as to guess at what the pathway was. Unfortunately, all we have is that a kind of a dry, crispy specimen, and the only evidence that we can draw from a dry, crispy specimen is that it was likely sitting dead in a protected area and then somehow became dislodged and ended up on the lawn. Um, and the only reason I say that is because had it been sitting on the lawn since last year, it wouldn't be there. Ants would have eaten it, rodents would have eaten it. The massive amounts of rain and snow we had uh, since last fall uh, would have degraded it further. So what it really looks like is that it fell out of something dead and landed on the lawn there. Um, how that happened, it, you can only guess. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a, an embankment of a yard that has some fruit trees on it. That's about it. Thank you for that. And one final thing, if the if the public's help is so key in this, why was there a, a five days pass between the confirmation that this was a hornet and um, announcing it? 
Oh, sure. Well, we don't generally do announcements on the weekend, and we have our um, basically our operations meetings Tuesday morning. This is Wednesday, so uh, giving us a day to all meet and discuss what the findings were and uh, what they mean and what we can actually what conclusions we can actually draw from it does require a little bit of coordination and uh, generally speaking you would not know within 24 hours when we get a, a, a detection in a new county um, because uh, this is a quarantine pest it is actionable we do actually run it through um, you know the the whole id chain all the way from uh, when it was submitted on the 9th uh, to the 11th which is a pretty quick turnaround considering it has to go to the other side of the country and then just uh, the weekend and a day to confer with our colleagues to understand what the results mean. So not too much of not too much of a delay, actually. Thank so you. pretty pretty quick turnaround. Thanks, Don. And I will also mention we have been doing quite a bit of um, outreach via social media, especially um, asking for those reports. So I think that's one of the things that hopefully contributed to to getting this one. Um, okay, I'm going to take a question from the chat. John, Ry excuse me, John Ryan asks: Has anyone ever seen an Asian giant hornet that looks like this one? Where are they generally found? Um, there are two or three countries in in uh, Southeast Asia, and it, it's more of an eco region, if you will, where this color form is found. But it would be very uh, irresponsible to speculate on which one. And uh, right now, as I said, we don't have enough genetic information in the global bank uh, to make any sort of a call. But uh, definitely uh, Southern Asia seems to be where this color form is found. And uh, like I said, it's just uh, the color form, the DNA analysis that does not match up with what we have does indicate it's, it's probably a separate event from what we've had going on before. But uh, at this point, we would not even care to speculate on which country this is from. Okay, uh, Nicole Jennings, uh, go ahead and ask your question. Good morning. So I'm wondering if this really is a one-off, that this doesn't appear to be connected to other Hornet populations. Is there indication that it could have come here on a container ship or something, maybe in Everett is a big port? Could it have gotten from there to Marysville? And how how could one hornet from another, potentially another region get here? Okay, um, it's, it's a very speculative question. Uh, I can give you several scenarios in the past. Uh, for example, there was a shipment of, basically a mail order shipment of, I believe it was shirts or clothing and where it was packed, a hornet had wandered into it and died. And when the person unpacked this package, uh, a dead hornet fell out. And so this is the type of scenario I am envisioning. But again, it is absolutely pure speculation. We have no way of knowing, but it is entirely possible for single hornet specimens to get from the other side of the, the world uh, to Washington or anywhere else in the United States, because we do have uh, such a vibrant uh, global trade market here in Washington and in other parts of the United States with other countries in the world. And so, unfortunately, hitchhikers are a side effect of all of the commerce that we do globally. Thanks. Um, Susan asks, when would males normally emerge? How do they compare with females? Okay, so um, males typically emerge uh, later in the fall, but they can come out as early as mid to late July, uh, at least in the native range. And we already experienced that here with our population uh, where we had a male detected in mid-July uh, in 2020. Uh, they're different from the females in that they are, their sole purpose is to basically mate with females. Uh, they have a different amount of abdominal segments. So that's how we knew it was a male right away. The antenna is a little bit different. And generally speaking, it is thought that they do not overwinter. Uh, obviously, you can never make an absolute statement because nature finds a way to do different things. But um, based on the typical biology of a male, we are thinking it is from last season because uh, nests basically really aren't even completely formed yet. Uh, right now, uh, mated queens uh, would be still in the process of making their new nest for the year. So there, there would really not be time to uh, create males at this point. Um, I hope that answers your question. 
Thanks, Ben. Take another one from the chat here. Um, there was a question about whether photos of this particular specimen will be available. Yes, they are currently available on our online press release and also the email that we sent out. You just have to click on the images to get larger versions of those photos. They are also uploaded to and additional um, photos have been uploaded to our um, box.com account, which you can get on our uh, Asian Giant Hornet webpage, so agr.wa.gov slash hornets. Just go to news and media, and then there will be links there to download images. And I also included a link in the chat there for a side-by-side -side comparison of the previous color forms that we've had and the one that just popped up in Snohomish County. So Elise, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and ask your question. Hi. Um, so, Carla, you mentioned that you've been active on social media reporting this most recent discovery. Your Facebook page is incredible. Thank you for that. And I'm just curious um, about how public interest compares between this most recent discovery and last season's almost like frenzy. And how might this public interest or lack of influence your approach to the 2021 trapping season? Do you have any indicators of um, how these this most recent discovery uh, sets the tone for the 2021 trapping season. Thanks again. Sure, thanks for the question. And I, I wanna start by clarifying, when I mentioned that we had been active on social media about this, I was really um, referring to just requesting reports for Asian Giant Hornet overall. We have not gone live, um, you know, at 8 a.m. this morning is when we went public with um, our press release and going out on social media. So there's not, um, I don't have a lot of data to pull from <laughs> for that, but I can tell you just so far this year, you know, I've had a lot of interest from media uh, about Asian giant hornets. So the interest continues to be strong. We still continue to get numerous reports, um, both, you know, on our online reporting form, through our hotline and through our email. And also we get reports through social media. So all of that still continues to be pretty active. I expect that given that this is a detection in a new county, that that will just sort of heighten the the interest of more Washingtonians in particular that are a bit closer to that. So um, as Sven mentioned, we're expanding. We have target counties that we um, encourage people to participate in citizen scientist trapping, and we're adding Snohomish and King County to those counties. So there will be more involvement from more people in, in the state and you know the interest for for Asian giant hornet has really never waned so uh, we still get requests all year long so we try to provide as much information as we can as, as soon as we can when we have new things to share let me grab another question here So Susan was asking a follow-up question, I think, of what is an example of something that might have contained the Asian giant hornet, a crate or a car? I think you gave one example. Do you want to expand on that or just leave it as is, Sven? Sure. I mean, basically a protected area. Uh, some people speculate plant pots, uh, used automobiles or even new automobiles. Uh, just try to remember in the fall after a female mates, she's looking for a protected area to spend the winter. So. I mean, it could literally be anything that's stored outside and then offers some sort of refuge for an insect. Um, as a lifelong entomologist, whenever I go to a new place and I want to see what's around, I, I look under street lamps. So anything stored under a street lamp outside could draw things. Not sure that's the case for the hornets, but I know Carla found one in a street lamp as we were... Um, investigating last year's finds. So, you know, there's plenty of examples of uh, ways it could get here. Uh, but uh, as for this one, uh, unfortunately, uh, only that hornet's gonna know uh, as much as we would love to. Um, Carla, I did see one in the chat that I can answer very quickly, uh, what baits are going to be used this year. And uh, we're, we're still, uh, for our programs, we're still gonna be using um, the orange juice and ethanol mixture that was used last year. 
which is uh, four ounces of 100% orange juice and four ounces of 10% or higher rice cooking wine. So not rice wine vinegar, but rice cooking wine. Um, but we're also offering another alternative bait, which is one cup of brown, dark brown sugar to one cup of water. And the advantage with that is it's a lot cheaper and you really don't even need to service those traps, but every two weeks, uh, which is really good. And one additional change to our trapping program this year is we're not asking people to mail samples in. We're only asking them to contact us if they suspect they have an Asian giant hornet in their trap contents. And so we actually anticipate to answer uh, the last question as well. Uh, we actually anticipate uh, uh, quite a bit more participation due to the uh, easier bait um, ingredients and uh, the, uh, the less frequent service period for it. And uh, we've tested this uh, before in other states uh, over a 10 year period. It does not seem to catch honeybees really at all. And so that was a big fear with a lot of folks. Uh, we've tested this uh, with some trapping here and uh, we feel this is a, a good bait alternative to go with if you don't wanna use the orange juice and ethanol, but me on my property, I'm gonna use the orange juice and ethanol because they've been using it overseas for years and it seems to work and I watched it work last year. So uh, I'll stick with what works until I see different. And I'll probably run the brown sugar too, just to see how that does. Thanks, Ben. And just to add a little bit onto that, in addition to the uh, new bait types, we will also, residents will not have to send in their specimens this year. So that would also hopefully make it a little bit more attractive to people. Uh, going on to the next question, is this the first Asian giant hornet detection in the US or just for Washington in 2021? Um, well, uh both actually. So uh, it is the first detection in 2021 for uh, the US and for Washington state. So I, I don't recall hearing of any others. Um, we received several reports, but they turned out to be uh, European hornets. Great, uh, another question from Nicole. How will this finding change the plan for trapping this year? Okay. Um, well, obviously we have to continue with uh, what, what our plan was to deal with what we know is going on in Whatcom County. This, this one, and I need to reiterate this, this is a single specimen and does not really constitute a whole population. And so what we're doing is more like exploratory trapping um, where we will uh, be inundating the area with uh, a combination of not just trapping, but outreach as well. Uh, because as Carla pointed out, uh, you know, a full 50% of the detections we know come from outreach and uh, the generous nature of our, our citizens here uh, of, you know, snapping a picture and turning in a report. So we will be upping the outreach ante sort of in the Snohomish King County area, as well as uh, in including um, adding a few traps of our own down in the Snohomish area. And uh, of course, encouraging trapping there as well from the citizen scientists. So the, the only real change is that we're kind of operating in two locations, uh, but we, we've kind of anticipated that this could happen anywhere in the state, um, which is why we asked everybody to look last year, uh, obviously focusing on the counties we were most concerned about, but we, we didn't really discourage anyone from hanging traps in Washington um, if they were you know, in an area of suitable habitat, like here on the Western side of the state. So we have a couple of questions for Paul. I'm going to combine a couple because they're very similar. Um, basically, what's happening up in Canada? <laughs> Any Asian giant hornet detections in British Columbia since last autumn? And what's the trapping plan for BC this year? Yes, uh, thank you. Um, uh, no excitement out here so far. Um, uh, just to recap, last year we had a grand total of uh, five specimens uh, collected in Fraser Valley, and they were so far apart both in time when they were detected as well as in space. Uh, this encompassed an, an area over 350 uh, uh, square kilometers. Uh, that means that uh, they could have been anywhere. Uh, it is very possible because at the fall season when they go through this reproductive stage that many of them were coming straight across the border. We don't know that, but uh, we never really had any nest uh, found 
here in the Fraser Valley last year. Um, so this year, we again, we're in the midst of putting all these traps up. Uh, but in addition to our <laughs> own trapping uh, efforts, because again, uh, none of the five that were detected last year were actually ever found in our traps. They were all uh, reported and collected by citizens. Uh, so we will place a great deal of emphasis on engaging the public uh, this year, but also the hundreds of beekeepers that are located in the various parts of the Fraser Valley. And uh, so, uh, and we will work with uh, local invasive species councils, with uh, public agencies, municipalities, First Nations, the RCMP, and the Canadian Border Agency in order to keep their eyes and ears open, so to say, so that we can rely on on, on their observation and uh, and hopefully, uh, well, if they are around, that we will find them. Um, that's basically the plan that we have in place. Oh, I should also mention that the word. Thanks, Paul. The, yeah, uh, I, I should don't also. Know I should Just mention. My... Oh, go ahead. I should also mention that in 2019, what Sven was referring to earlier had to do with, of course, the very first find of uh, um, Vespa mandarinia on Vancouver Island. And of course, last year we went through a very comprehensive uh, surveillance out there and not a single sighting or any collection of a specimen was found on Vancouver Island. And so this year we will do this again. And if by September uh, it will still be free of uh, the Asian giant hornet, we hopefully can then declare Vancouver Island free of the Asian giant hornet. So um, hopefully that the eradication that took, the nest eradication that took place in September uh, of 2019 proved to be then the only nest ever found on Vancouver Island. And let's hope that it uh, continues uh, this way. One more thing that I like to add to it, uh, based on the conversation that we had earlier, or what Sven presented earlier, to do with these various uh, uh, subspecies of Vespa mandarinia. I think the key here is not so much uh, the academic interest, of course it's interesting to, for the scientific folks, uh, but I think what it is more uh, signifying, uh, what is more important is, is that here on the west coast we will continue to be exposed to the uh, incidental introductions of these kind of species. Because keep in mind that in May of 2019, um, uh, another Vespa species, Vespa soror, was uh, one single specimen, a queen, was collected in Vancouver Harbor. So uh, it is quite evident that with this intensive trade, uh, maritime shipments of all kinds of goods, uh, that uh, we can expect future exposures, if you will, to these kind of insects. So. Thanks, Paul. Don, I see you have your hand up again. Don Jenkins, you want to go ahead and ask your question? Just a, a quick, a couple minor things. So if the coloring was different, was the size of this specimen comparable to what has been found previously? Yeah, it was It was approximately an inch and a half, uh, like some of the other males we've collected. But uh, if you see the pictures, you'll you'll immediately notice that the, the banding on the, the abdomen is uh, lacking. It's a very dark specimen. And just a reminder for those of you that are online, I did post a link to a kind of side-by-side -side comparison photo of the color variation that we have had and the ones that we have now, uh, or the new introduction, I should say, or excuse me, the new detection. Uh, there's another question. They're asking, um, Glenn is asking if you can uh, just kind of describe the areas where Asian giant hornets have been detected in Canada and the U.S. to date. Um, sure, I'll, I'll go ahead. Uh, I'll let Paul handle the Canadian part, but uh, when you mean describe the areas, they're uh, kind of rural, um, usually low-lying hills, but uh, that's uh, exactly what it says in most of the literature that they prefer. Um, a lot of farms in the area and uh, forested areas adjacent to it. Uh, this detection in Snohomish is uh, quite a bit different. 
this is a the the Marysville area is uh, uh, fairly developed. Uh, a lot of housing there, and uh, just a few green belts tucked in between. So, um, from that respect, it's uh, completely also completely different from the other areas where we have detected it uh, in Whatcom County. Paul, your your scenarios. Yeah, so basically on Vancouver Island, there were two areas that we surveyed. One, of course, is the Nanaimo area where the original nest was found. And then another area south uh, between Duncan and Lake Cowichan, which is called the Cowichan Valley, because there were some reports that appeared to be credible reports of sightings that was in, uh, in uh, 2019. Uh, and early 2020, uh, these proved to be false. But uh, uh, so, uh, but we continue to survey Vancouver Island, and then in the Fraser Valley, it is uh, largely confined to uh, the area closest to the Canada-U.S. border, uh, ranging from White Rock, which is just northwest of Blaine, uh, further down to. Um, the Alder Grove crossing, and I do not know what the highway is that extends into the United States, but in Washington state, but uh, after that, the habitat changes uh, to uh, to basically dairy farms and open fields and pretty moist uh, uh, soil conditions that are less conducive for uh, these hornets to exist. So it is really primarily this forested area that extends from the Alder Grove crossing west towards White Rock. And that is what we will be uh, focusing on in 2021. And, uh, and, and of course, a few miles inland as well. So. Thanks, Paul. Uh, last call for questions. Um, if I missed your question, please go ahead and pop it in the chat again uh, or raise your hand. We'll be happy to get all those questions answered. Not seeing, oh, I see one just popped in there. Uh, Lee said, uh, you said that the most recent specimen is definitely not from this season. Is it possible that this most recent specimen arrived in the US before the first Asian giant hornet was discovered in 2019? And how likely is that? You're muted. Sven, you're muted. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. Um, it It's probably, less likely to be from previous seasons than it is from last season. So generally speaking, when an insect dies, other insects come and eat it. Um, and so to find a, a cadaver from the last season is, is not uncommon to find it from uh, seasons uh, prior to that, like before 2019, uh, less likely. It's not impossible, of course, but uh, like I said, um, this one is strange uh, because it appeared to be a, a dead dry specimen from a protected area that suddenly ended up out on a lawn. And that's, you know, that's all the information we have and we can't really do too much with that other than to say we need to keep an eye on the area uh, just, just to ensure that it wasn't, you know, from an active nest last year, which is also a possibility. Thanks. That appears to be the end of the questions, unless, oh, that, that last question. Um, so before wrapping up again, as always, I'd like to re reiterate how much we appreciate you asking the public to report every hornet every time they see one. It always provides useful information. Thanks again. And as usual, if you do need further assistance, you can contact myself or the appropriate agent agency media contact, and we'll be happy to um, respond to any further questions that you may have. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Carla. Thank you.